Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So if you've been watching the channel at all, you'll know that my favourite thing is electrolysis. And today we're going to have a go at the classic electrolysis experiment separating hydrogen and oxygen from water. So recently I bought these pipe fittings from Bunnings. Actually not that recently, you've probably seen them in the background over there in quite a few of my previous videos but today we're going to get around to putting all these together uh, in a way that we can uh, hook up voltage uh, using this nickel foil which I got from eBay and we should be able to generate hydrogen and oxygen gas very easily. Anyway uh, this is the kind of thing I'm thinking of so got it all put together um, we'll fill this with a sodium hydroxide solution stick an electrode down each one of those have the electrodes like right down here and we should be able to generate hydrogen and oxygen gas from those electrodes what i'm going to do to make sure the hydrogen and oxygen stay separated is i'm going to cover this part of the pipe on either side with a bit of fabric maybe cotton or something something kind of resistant to sodium hydroxide so that we can just make sure that no oxygen gets in the, uh, the hydrogen coming off and no hydrogen gets into the oxygen coming off. I also thought, just so we can see like the water level in there, I thought we could glue and drill a small hole in the bottom of, or in the top of this PVC fitting here, stick a glass tube in and this could act as our, the, the way that we fill it up and empty it and it'll also show us how full uh, the container is with water. What I've set up now is I've got a couple of those little pieces of the fabric and I've put it on the end of uh, these little uh, 45 degree angle pieces. So really what I'm going to do is I can get that on there like it was before. We'll have the fabric on the end of that piece of PVC. I'll stick this piece on, do it a little bit better when I've got two hands, just so that it's covering the um, fabric and so that we have that kind of fabric membrane in there which should block any bubbles as I've said before. Uh, push it in just so that all the uh, the fabric around the edge here is covered. Put a little bit of PVC cement right around uh, the PVC pipe here and then just push it in all the way. Uh, hopefully that should be easy enough. And given how PVC cement works in that it's not a glue really uh, and that it just kind of chemically bonds the plastic together to like one single piece of plastic I'm pretty sure that using PVC cement should be sodium hydroxide resistant so I'm not going to worry about that anyway that's ready to go so I'll go ahead and glue it and I won't film it because you know it'd be good to have both hands got to be quick with the glue uh, and once that's done uh, that should be the trickiest bit of the build. So really, that was easier than I expected. Uh, I think it's all well glued. We've got a bunch of glue down in there. And the membranes have done fine. You can't really see in there. Oh yeah. But, like that's nice and strong. Um, all that's left to do is just set up the electrodes um, glue these pieces in and then we'll be ready for electrolysis. Basically what we're going to do with the electrodes is uh, we want the electrodes as far down in there as we can get them because the closer the electrodes are you know the the higher current we can get at lower voltages so the whole process is going to be more efficient the closer we can get the electrodes and to help that efficiency along even more what we can do is kind of like fold the end up into like a really densely packed surface area of electrode and hopefully that'll provide a nice uh, surface for the gases to uh, form on. Uh, we need the electrode also uh, to go right down this pipe so we'll have it coming through the lid up here and we could probably just silicon up uh, the lid with like a gas outlet and everything. Basically this is what I'm thinking. See that high surface area down the bottom there? 
and this will just go straight in there and you can see we've got uh, current collectors up the top where we can just connect up our voltage. Well this is looking pretty good. I've gone ahead and glued in these uh, other pieces of PVC pipe and I've positioned the electrodes where they're supposed to go down the bottom. Um, I think what I'm going to do next is just silicon uh, these electrodes in and then we don't really have all that much left to do. We just got to put in this glass tube. Uh, we got to drill a couple of holes for gas takeoff and then I think we're going to be done. Okay, it's the next day. I've done all that boring stuff off camera. I've stuck that glass tube down in through that hole, uh, put some uh, PVC cement around it and then some silicon so hopefully that'll keep any uh, sodium hydroxide solution from just leaking out of that joint. I've also set up just this temporary piece of plywood just to hold this glass tube in position just because that's going to be quite a fragile piece there. I've also um, got the gas tubes um, siliconed into the top of these pieces. This silicon uh, around the electrodes has dried also so that's all nice. Uh, the only thing left to do after all of this silicon dries, you can see I've also got the uh, these little glass vials as like little, little bubblers to show the gas flow rate. Uh, the only thing left to do after all of this dries is uh, solder these wires onto the nickel strips and then uh, these electrodes should be good to just go straight in uh, this piece. So should be good to generate some hydrogen maybe even later today. Alrighty, once again I've left uh, the silicon to dry overnight. All the silicon around these little bubbler vials. Uh, everything has dried now and I think we're ready to go. I also soldered on uh, these wires to these electrodes. Um, it's a bit trickier than I thought soldering to nickel, but I did it in the end. Um, also got these little connectors on the end so we can have a kind of high current flowing through this thing because you now we want to generate quite a bit of hydrogen gas. So for our electrolyte, I'm just going to add a whole bunch of sodium hydroxide in there. And hopefully that should be, once that all dissolves, uh, a good enough electrolyte for our electrolysis. Okay, the sodium hydroxide solution is made, the um, cement has dried, and the electrodes are ready, so all that's left to do is to pour the sodium hydroxide solution into the electrolysis chamber. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Alrighty, after waiting for ages for the water to permeate through the chambers, I mean, that indicates that our membranes are doing a good job. And we are finally ready. We've got it all hooked up to the power supply. We've even got a current meter. It's upside down because I can't really wire it the other way. Uh, but we're going to start out as we always do, connect up to 3.3 volts and see just how much current we can get out of the thing. So if I just connect this up, already we're getting a bit over half an amp there and we should we watch these bubblers start to see yep gas coming out each of the two chambers All right to make it happen a little bit quicker five volts see there we get a little bit over an amp maybe a little bit less and there we have it you can see hydrogen well of course mostly it's going to be air because there's a lot of air trapped in that chamber right now but if we left that for a while however that would be pretty much pure hydrogen coming out of that side of the chamber and then over here you can see bubbling quite a bit slower than the hydrogen is our oxygen coming off the anode just quickly i want to see how well it does at 12 volts and that's three amps right there and you can see we're generating a whole bunch of hydrogen and oxygen gas at 3 amps actually we're generating a little bit over 1.2 litres of hydrogen every hour so that's pretty cool. Now that it's been running for a while I've got some soapy water for the hydrogen to bubble into and we'll have a go at 
lighting it just to prove that we are making hydrogen gas. Nice. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. I've got to leave pretty soon, but tomorrow uh, we'll, we'll try to set this up on uh, solar power instead so that we're making the hydrogen for free and see if we can fill a whole bag with hydrogen. Alrighty, it's now the next day. Um, you can see the cell has held on to the sodium hydroxide perfectly. I haven't found any leaks whatsoever. So I'm pretty sure all of the seals I made around the joints, they're all good. Uh, I've set up somewhat of a better system for powering the cell. Uh, it's a nice sunny day today. So um, we can use our solar panel to power it. I've got our current meter, a switch to turn it off and on, and I've got just a diode, seeing as we're using a solar panel, it's good to make sure that no current's gonna be going back into the cells. Uh, so what I'll do now is set up a solar panel in the sun, get some wires to connect it all up with, and we'll generate ourselves some solar hydrogen. Alrighty, solar panel is in the sun. We've got connection running all the way over to uh, our hydrogen generator through the diode, through the current meter, through the switch, and then through the cell. So if we go ahead and turn that on, you can see we get oh, a little bit less than four amps, and straight away we can see bubbles of hydrogen bubbling out the hydrogen side, and bubbles of oxygen bubbling out of the oxygen side. So after leaving it running for a few minutes, I uh, changed a couple of things. I took out the diode, it was just heating up a lot because of the high current flowing through it and we don't really need it uh, so I just ended up taking it out. Uh, two, I wiped off the solar panel because it was actually quite dusty so hopefully we're generating a bit more current from that now and you can see that the combined effect of removing the diode and cleaning off the solar panel we now have nearly five amps flowing through the cell. Now what I think we need to do uh, seeing as we're pumping 5 amps at 75 watts through the cell uh, is fill this up with some cold water just to act as like a cooling buffer because 75 watts through the cell that's quite a bit of heating that's going to be happening to that water yeah so that's already getting quite hot so I'm just going to fill up this container with some water and hopefully that'll be enough cooling to keep this cell running and the final thing to do, I've got this plastic bag hooked onto the hydrogen side. Hopefully, if we leave this going for long enough, we've got it running at a rate of about, oh, what is it? About one and a half liters per hour right now. Maybe even more, maybe even two liters per hour of hydrogen gas being generated. So hopefully in not too long, we might be able to fill up this plastic bag with hydrogen gas. Two more little things I've done before we just leave it to do its thing for the next few hours. Um, I repositioned the solar panel so that it's not pointing directly at the sun, just to limit the current a little bit, because I was a little bit worried. We were getting up to six amps there for a while, just because like it's really sunny today. And, and that's a lot of power going through the cell, like it was getting hot pretty quickly. So I think the limit for the angle that I've got it at now is about four amps, which I'm pretty happy with. That should be fine. And I've also replaced the cooling dish with uh, one that's a little bit deeper and hopefully will cool it down a little bit more efficiently. So we'll leave that to do its thing. So it's been about five hours since we started electrolysis. Everything is going well. Uh, the sun, however, has nearly set about an hour or so till it it's gone. Uh, the current's tapered off quite a bit. I think we're still getting around four amps or so, but um, the amount of hydrogen that we got in the end, it's not too bad. Like there's a fair bit there, but I was expecting a little bit more, especially at like the four amps that we were running at. I just think that that's probably because of the plastic bag that I'm using here. So it's like going to leak hydrogen a whole bunch. Anyway, while it was successful in the fact that we can leave the cell running at five amps for six hours or so. Uh, I think maybe we'll try again tomorrow. Maybe I'll set up 
this whole thing with the solar panel a little bit earlier in the day so we can get a whole bunch more hydrogen gas generated see if we can fill a whole bag because that's what I was hoping to do so we could fill the bag and then take it off and it'd float once again it's the next day uh, we're gonna have another go at generating a bag of hydrogen gas uh, it's a little bit not sunny today it's not reliable enough to run the hydrogen generator full time so I've just got 12 volt power supply which we will run the device with. So let's turn that on now. Straight away we get nearly three and a half amps, so that's good. That'll build up as the cell heats up a little bit. And once we've left this running for a little bit, once again, I'll connect up the plastic bag to the hydrogen output. Alrighty, it's been running for 20 minutes just to purge the gas out of the system. And I was about to go ahead and connect up the plastic bag to the hydrogen outlet to capture it, uh, but the current has really risen quite a lot. We've got nearly five and a half amps now. Now measured the voltage coming off this power supply and it's actually 15 volts, not 12. Even though it does say, like, where is it? Yeah, 12 volts, eight amps. We are getting 15 volts out there, probably because this is meant to be like a battery charger or something. And 15 volts at five and a half amps, that's a lot of power going into this. Uh, little cell here so I'm a little bit worried about that I think I'm gonna replace the power supply with uh, one of my PC power supplies which I know actually outputs 12 volt and there finally got 12 volts hooked up and what is hopefully a much more stable current of just about a little bit over four amps there got our bag hooked up ready to collect all the hydrogen and hopefully in seven or eight hours we might have around 15 litres of hydrogen gas stored in this bag. Alrighty, it's about nine hours since we started making hydrogen. Uh, I've been switching it between 12 volts and 5 volts every now and again just to keep the current limited. Right now we're running it a little bit over 6 amps, which I found actually seems to do alright considering that there's 72 watts of power going into the cell. Uh, but you can see we have generated quite a large amount of hydrogen gas. I mean, enough to... It's trying to float. This is a pretty stiff tubing, so you know, it's not going to float all the way up. But I think this is pretty much full, so I'll go ahead and take off that plastic bag. First of all, I've taken off the bag of hydrogen, and it's definitely hydrogen because if I let go, that'll definitely float. But anyway, that's a fair bit of hydrogen that we've generated over the last half a day. While we didn't make it with solar power, uh, we could have, and that's all that matters. The only thing left to check is the condition of the electrodes after, well, we must have had the cell running for 12, 14 hours total. And having a look at them, they look perfectly fine. Sorry about the low light, but especially the anode, this one, I expected some like discoloration, maybe like some tiny thin oxide layer on the nickel, but there's absolutely nothing. Those little lines, the little folds in the in the strip that were there before, looking exactly brand new, like when we put it in there. Same for the cathode, but you know, we expected that. One more thing to mention is that I thought of this while we were making the hydrogen, we could also make nitrogen gas with this setup. I don't know if you've seen my video on making nitrogen from ammonia, but it's pretty much essentially the same as this, but rather than using a sodium hydroxide electrolyte, we could use a ammonia electrolyte, and that would generate nitrogen on the anode rather than oxygen. I'm pretty sure a nickel anode should work pretty well for that. So, you know, if we ever need nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, or hydrogen gas, this will do the job. I've wanted to build one of these, actually, well, a good one of these for a very long time. I've actually built five similar devices to this in the past. Like mid 2017, I built one of these hydrogen generators for like a school fair or something. Anyway, it didn't work very well, but it did generate a little bit of hydrogen gas, or it was oxyhydrogen gas, seeing as I didn't actually separate the oxygen and hydrogen coming off the cell. And then I decided to build like my own, but I could never really get it to work. I always use like electrodes that would fall apart or like the container would leak or the hydrogen and oxygen wouldn't separate properly. 
Anyway, I'm very happy to have, finally, a device that doesn't leak, that generates clean hydrogen, clean oxygen, and the electrodes don't fall apart. Also, uh, a thousand subscribers, that's cool too. See you later.